morning. This is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, cranial sacral therapist, Tellington T Touch practitioner, and <laughs> for animals and people, and a Phoenix Rising certified yoga instructor. And this is my corgi, Tristan. And we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Yesterday, somebody said you look like a stuffed animal. He said, I'm one up from stuffed. I have a little bit of ambition. <laughs> So today we're gonna do a few more yoga poses with your pet. You can do this again with any dog, cat, rabbit, hamster, ferret, whatever you've got. <laughs> um, and there are yoga poses that you can do with horses, but uh, it is snowing and about 31 degrees outside and I am not going to find a horse today. So uh, we're gonna stay here and do yoga with your dog. So we're gonna start as we do every day with some deep breaths. Your bestie. Oh, there you go. He's not very pleased with his squash blossom. And put your hands on your lap with your thumb and index finger together and take some deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Come here, honey. start with what I like to call lizard pose. It has many other names, but um, that's the easiest one. <laughs> so to do this, you'll just go from your sitting position, whatever you're in, bend your knees, and you're going to bring your knees to one side and follow that movement around in that direction with your whole body so that you're resting on your forearms on the ground. So come around this way, Biss. Come on. Come around this way. Come, come on. He's lizarding right in front of me. He doesn't want to come over here. Come on, honey. So you just follow that movement around. Come. And bring your forehead to the ground and your weight is on your forearms. Hi. Hi, Biss. And this is a really gentle way to open up the thoracic spine. back up and typically if this was a real class we'd be holding these poses much longer but I don't want to have you guys watching this for an hour <laughs> so then you bring your knees to the other side follow that movement around and bring your head to the ground on your forehead and you're resting your upper body on your forearms Squash blossom, but you are a little squash this day. <laughs> and then gradually push yourself back up. Come this way, Corgi. Come this way, son. And now we're going to go onto our belly. And you're going to start with um, 
your forehead resting on your crossed hands. And your legs resting behind you so you're just on your belly. And then we're going to come up into Sphinx Pose. So you walk yourself up to your elbows, extend your fingers in front of you. Mine get to be on a corgi foot. <laughs> and pull yourself forward with your fingertips. But you're really lengthening your spine when you do this and relax your legs. They should be pointed out behind you, but not uh, clenched. Come back down. And because we're doing yoga with dogs, even though this is a big stretch early in the morning, you're gonna press yourselves up so that your arms are straight and you're looking up. This is upward facing dog. As they say in yoga, this stretches your whole front body. And lower yourself back down gradually, pressing your forehead on your crossed arms. This is alligator pose. And you're gonna bend your knees and windshield wiper your legs. This releases your lower back. And sometimes when I'm lucky, Kirsten chooses to walk on my back and I get a little dog paw massage. Lots of people's cats like to do that. I have to say, I have not been thrilled having a goat walk on me in this position though. And then we're gonna just push back into child pose. So you bring your knees under you, extend your arms in front of you. Bring your forehead to the ground. And as they say, in the full expression of this pose, your elbows are off the ground. But we are not doing anything that intense today, so you can allow your arms to rest on the floor and your forehead to come to the floor. back up through a table or on our hands and knees and from here we're going to go into what we call Shavasana which is also known as corpse pose but we're going to call it resting pose today and I have to tell you a few things about this pose I mean you're basically laying on your back and breathing and at the end of a yoga class, this can last from five minutes to 15 minutes or more. Um, and when I was in yoga training, <laughs> there were discussions about the poses and our relationships with them. And many people found this to be the hardest pose. Those are the people that can't sit still, that can't be with themselves. And so as much as it seems easy to lay on your back, it is not for some people. And if it is uncomfortable for you, this is a good time to get comfortable with that pose because it will help you cope with all the stressful things going on in the world right now. And if you're doing this with a rabbit or a cat or a guinea pig or a hamster, having them lay on top of you and connect with your heart while you're doing this pose can be really useful. Or a big dog's head laying there. We're just gonna use the whole body of the little dog. Come on, Bess. And sometimes he likes to be upside down. Sometimes he likes to be right side up. Oh, fully 
have like 20 ladybugs on the ceiling today. That's gonna be a problem later. <laughs> so once you're in this pose, ideally your palms will be facing up, your entire body will be relaxed, and you'll take several rounds of deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. dog loves coconut and I put coconut oil on my body and so my hands smell and taste like coconut oil and he's quite happy about that. <laughs> on your back and honestly if you've never done yoga and you don't ever plan to if you just do this it will make huge benefits for your body and sometimes you might need a very small flat pillow just a fold of a blanket to keep your neck in neutral but just laying here for a little while on a floor not your bed because it's too soft uh, and just noticing how your body releases what parts contact the floor whether your right and left leg feel the same length how your shoulders feel. Just laying on your back like this can give you a lot of information about your body and also help your body regenerate, regenerate and find new ways of balance and posture that are beneficial. So what appears to be an easy pose can bring you many challenges and joys. And when you come out of this pose, a little to one side. As your mic falls off. <laughs> and then gradually come up to a seated position. Can you hear a little corgi? Oh, it's been so fun with you wearing your squash blossom today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Tristan and I say namaste. We hope you get to practice some yoga with your pets. Um, there are many other poses you can do with your dog. There are some more challenging standing poses that I find really fun to do um, with my dog. Right, Jessica? <laughs> and for some reason, easier when I have my dog with me um, because our bodies and uh, respiratory rates start to synchronize with our pets when we do yoga with them and our own respiratory rate and body systems become calmer which makes us more fun to hang out with for our dogs so yoga can bring many benefits to you and your pets and really improve your relationship together so we will be back probably on Monday unless we do a special Easter bunny episode on Sunday and we might we have bunny ears we have a tail we might want to do that what do you think you want to be a rabbit <laughs> only if there's treats involved. So thanks for joining us for all of our dog yoga videos and we will be back on Monday, uh, probably moving on to some other things unless there's uh, something exciting happening in the yard because I really think it would be fun to do yoga on my deck uh, with the stream and the birds and nature with the Tristan. So we'll see if that works out. So thanks for joining us today, namaste. The light and dark in me honors the light and dark in you. Everybody have a good day. Thanks for joining us.